uh, and you've got this vast influence on the radio and all, some would say, you know, you have a kind of celebrity status of your own. Does that make you uncomfortable? What, uh, what are your thoughts about that? Look, I, um, I, I just want to be a teacher. I just want to be a, a preacher and teacher of the truth. I don't, I don't want anything other than that. I do understand, as I mentioned to you, if we're talking a little bit about Romans, that people understand what Isaiah meant when he said, how beautiful to feed to those who bring the good news. I understand, um, I, I understand that we all love whoever brought us the truth, whoever brought us the gospel, whoever taught us the gospel. Um, you know, you heard Monica. Uh, say that I had a special place in her life because God used me to bring the truth. Uh, that, that's really not me. That's, that's not about me. That's really about the truth. I, I'm just the delivery guy. I'm, I'm just kind of the waiter. The Lord cooks the meal. So I, I don't really, um, you know, I, I'm happy to be called John. Um, I don't want any more than that. I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. I. I uh, it's it's a little um, yeah that, that it's a little embarrassing you know it, it, yeah you know all, it, you people are so kind to me and uh, I'm not quite sure I get it all I'm not sure I quite understand it all how you view me um, because I'm just trying to be a teacher and when I came to Grace Church many years ago uh, people would say to me um, tell us how to preach tell, tell us how you preach so. And I couldn't even do that. Some of you remember Fred Barshaw. He would always say, don't ask him. He doesn't know why he does what he does. <laughs> and and I, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't know. If it's interesting to you, I don't understand why it is. I don't really know. Um, there's not a technique. I don't work on it. Somebody asked me one time if I practice my sermons in front of a mirror. <laughs> so, are you kidding? Um, <laughs> So I just, I just do what I do, and the Lord has done what He has done. And I, I will tell you this, that if, um, if anybody is surprised at what the Lord has done, they're not as surprised as I am because uh, I remember my son Mark one day sat down in the bed with me and he said, Dad, he said, you know, I, I don't understand you. He was a teenager. I said, really? What is it? He said, you know, when, when you get in the pulpit and preach, you are really something, but the rest of the time, you're not really very special at all. <laughs> he, the, he was absolutely dead serious. A lot of us have noticed that about you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So uh, <clears throat> I, just, I just want to be faithful to do what God's given me to do, and, and I'm, I'm thankful for the strength uh, to endure. You know, I've been healthy, just a few incidents through the years, um, and I love what I do. I love it as much now as I ever have, and uh, I'm just very thankful to be able to do it. I think the key to this thing, you know, I, I've said this many times to you, uh, I was concerned from the very beginning about the depth of my ministry, and, and I said, if I take care of the depth of my ministry, I can leave the breadth of it to God. He, you know, if it's something He can use, then He'll take it where He wants it to go. So I've never done anything to take it anywhere. I don't do anything with tapes or CDs or downloads or, or any, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't go places and set up events for myself and I, I just stay here all these years here in this pulpit week after week after week and, um, and I think there's something about that that uh, puts an honesty into your life because um, the people in this church aren't un under any illusions. They know me. They know my wife. They know my kids. They know my grandkids. They know my family. Uh, I'm, I'm not a celebrity to them. I'm just their shepherd with uh, strengths and weaknesses. They all know and understand that. Um, and they see me for who I am and I need that. I, I think it's a dangerous thing to go on the road and begin to believe your press clippings. I, I think you need the accountability of a congregation and leadership and men around you that care for you and love you and speak into your life. And, and that's been the genius of being here is having friends like you. And you, you tell me things frequently that I don't particularly care to hear, <laughs> but you always do it kindly. I try to be kind. You are. You're a true friend. All right, let's change subjects. By the way, I, well, before you do, I, I can tell you the best part of ministry is the friendships. Hmm. And we have all these people that have been, how long have you been here? Nearly 30 years. 30 years. And 
these are deep friendships. I mean, we, we love each other around here, and, it, and it, it permeates through the congregation as well. And that's the joy of ministry. And we don't live with some kind of illusions that we're something special. We, we all have gifts. We all do what we do. And, and God takes it where He wants to take it.